everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name's Lee. You're watching Dark Roots Creations, and this is the Around the World tag. I saw this tag a while back on Mike from Fit to Be Reg channel. I will link his video in the description box below. This a uh, tag was inspired by Around the World in 80 Days, so some of the questions are in reference to that. Question one, your favorite book set in or with reference to Eastern Europe or Asia? I recently just finished the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. This is a Asia-inspired mafia fantasy. I would highly recommend it. There's three books in the series, Jade City, Jade War, and Jade Legacy, and it did not disappoint at all. Number two, a booktuber from another country that you watch regularly. I actually watch quite a few uh, non-US, non-North America booktubers, but the first one that comes to mind is Mr. Francie, and he is from Australia. I will also link his channel down below. Three, a book you DNF'd before 80 pages. This is Have a Nice Day, A Tale of Blood and Sweat Socks by Mick Foley. He was a WWE wrestler, real name Mick Foley. He was also known as a bunch of other names along the way. Um, off the top of my head, I can think of Dude Love and Mankind. So uh, this was a huge book. I thought I would love it, but couldn't even get into it, so DNF. Four, a book you ended up settling for, like you purchased it at an airport or something and found yourself pleasantly surprised. The Legend of Sheba, Rise of a Queen by Tosca Lee. This is about a girl who inherits her father's throne and she, um, it's the tale of her journey going to visit a king in another land and what she's trying to get from him, what he's trying to get from her and their relationship. Really good book. I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Number five, in Jules Verne's classic Around the World in 80 Days, Phileas Fogg is a perfectionist, more concerned with his perfection than the amazing places he travels. Name a character that gave you perfectionist vibes, know-all, arrogant, or prideful vibes. If that doesn't resonate, describe a way in which you are a perfectionist when it comes to any of your bookish habits. I am not a perfectionist. That I'm far from that. So I'm going to go with Daniel McGregor from the McGregor series by Nora Roberts. He is the patriarch of the... McGregor clan and he is very um he's very prideful he's very arrogant and he is very pushy uh there's like 10 books in the series he is very pushy when it comes to him believing in his heart a couple should be together and pushing them to be together at all costs and this goes for his children his grandchildren his neighbors and people that he knows so um, does he mean well? Yes, but he is all of those other things. Six, your favorite book said in, reference to, or linked to Africa. I haven't read any books yet set in Africa, but I am pl planning on reading Hard Rain by Irma Vetner. This is the first book in the Rogue series, and it does play take place in Tanzania. So I am looking forward to getting to that book. It's actually on my list to read for my uh, 2019 books that I need to get done this year. So, Seven, judging by only the first 80 pages of a book, what's the best book that you've read? And then judging by only the last 80 pages of a book, what's the best book that you've read? This is really hard because I had to like go back and think of all these books that I've ever read. Um, for the, the best book with the first 80 pages, I'm going to say Small Town Girls by Pamela Wallace. This is a book about four friends 
at their high school graduation, uh, an incident that happens at a party after that, and how this affects their lives going forward. Uh, a couple decades have passed, you see what the women are up to, and of course something brings them back to the town again, having to do with that night of high school graduation and um, just seeing where all their lives have gone. But I would say from the setup of the first 80 pages, I was super intrigued into this book and would consider it really good. And the last 80 pages of a book that I would say is a great read is The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. I think the whole book was excellent, but the last 80 pages is definitely definitely gives you enough that you'd be like, yes, I need to go back and read this whole thing. Um, definitely satisfying within the last 80 pages though. So I would pick those two books. Eight, a book that prominently features an ethnic or local cuisine in some prominent way featured in the book, or even if it just had a standout cameo. For me, this would be the Noodle Shop mystery series by Vivian Chen. Um, her, the family owns a noodle shop called Holy Noodle and um, they do go into some of the dishes. I like uh, just the vibe of the restaurant itself. So I'm gonna go with that. And next month I am planning on catching up on the series. So now I'm looking forward to that even more. Number nine, the last travel or nonfiction book you looked at or read featuring a city other than your own. And do you have a story? Um, I don't have a story for this one, but it would be In Order to Live by uh, Yeon Mi Park. And this is about a girl who escapes from North Korea. She winds up going to China, South Korea, and then the United States. So this is a, a nonfiction book and I really enjoyed it. And you still have time to get it in. This is AAPI Month Asian American Pacific Islander month. So if you wanted to read it for this month, this is the perfect time to do it. Number 10, any book you have read, set in, or referenced to Central or South America. And I read a book called Gringos in Paradise by Barry Golson. I also DNF this. This was about a bunch of expat Americans who move down to Mexico after they retire and start like a community there. So I can't tell you fully what it was about because I did DNF it. I am currently reading Charlie Hernandez and the League of Shadows by Ryan Kaleo and that is based a lot on um, folklore and mythology from the Iberia Peninsula and I would say Caribbean and South America um, because his parents are Mexican, Cuban, and something else. I forget. So there's that too. Number 11, your favorite book referencing another world, universe, or dimension. This sounds very sci-fi-ish. I'm not too into sci-fi. But last year I did read Dune by Frank Herbert, and this is set on a desert planet called Arrakis. So I guess I will say that's my favorite one. Number 12. In Rita Goldman's Gelman's Tales of a Female Nomad, Rita left an elegant life in LA to follow her dream of connecting with people in cultures all over the world. Your dream read to read in any dream location, real or fictional, of your choosing. Whew, when I said this, I did not read the part about fictional, but I did pick three places. One, all the Lucky Santangelo books by Jackie Collins, and I would read these while on a yacht sailing in the Mediterranean. Two, uh, a classic, even though I don't like classics, but somehow I feel like reading a classic in the English countryside would be the perfect way for me to get through a classic. And three, some book about a Nantucket summer while having a picnic on the lawn in front of the Eiffel Tower in spring. So the idea of this would be that I'm vacationing in Paris and I'm enjoying the park and just, you know, having my baguette and just enjoying my book, you know, the typical um, 
ideal scene of what being in Paris would be. And that would be during the springtime. And I would be reading a book about Nantucket summer, which of course I would just be, you know, leaving, just coming home to do my laundry and then just setting off to go to Nantucket after that and spending a summer there, which is something that I do plan. I mean, not a summer because I ain't got money like that, but to spend some time in Nantucket a weekend, a couple days, something like that is on my goal list because thank you, Ellen Hildebrand, for doing that to me. So. So that's it. That is the tag. If any of you would like to do this one, tag your it. If you don't have a channel and you want to put your answers below, I would love to read them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.